Good morning. Happy Monday. Um, took a break last week. It was bank holiday and half term. But I am back this Monday with a Parenting for Faith tool. Quick recap, because it's been two weeks. Creating windows. Let our kids see a little bit of what our relationship with God looks like and how we connect with God. Framing, explaining how God fits into this world. Um, and maybe why we do things or um, just framing his creation things like that um, last the last one we looked at was unwinding unbalanced views or wrong views of God and helping our kids have a balanced view of who God is and this week I have a toy phone we are on parenting for faith tool number four which is chat and catch now you've heard this term used at church before and I did do a little talk on what it was uh, last last year now I think it was when we looked at prayer or it might have even been earlier this year I think because it was when we did just before we did prayer space I think um, so you might be a bit more familiar with this tool but I'm going to break it down into two halves so this week we're going to look at chatting to God and next week we'll look at catching from God um, so Chat and catch is what we have started calling prayer in kids' church. Um, now, there is a time and a place for formal prayer, liturgical prayer, group prayer, where we are saying, Dear God, and we are finishing our men, and we are praying together corporately. Um, and I like to explain to kids that actually the reason we say our men is because we're saying that we agree. So when someone else says a prayer, we're saying our men because we agree with the prayer that they've just prayed, um, not because it's a word that we have to say. So chat and catch is more about your individual connection with God. And for some people, using more formal prayers is the way that they like to chat to God. Um, and that is absolutely fine. But we want to show our kids that there are also other ways of chatting to God and we don't want them to get into a point where they are worrying about whether or not they are saying the right thing, whether or not they are using the right sort of religious words, um, whether or not they are starting and ending their prayers correctly because it's not about that. God doesn't, doesn't care about that. Um, actually what he wants us to do is to trust him with the small things of our lives and the big things of our lives and include him in our everyday lives and our everyday journeys and situations. So chatting to God, which is what we're focusing on this week, is about telling God about the small things and the big things, telling him about the funny things and the more serious things um, and letting God into every part of our lives. I know that for me, actually, most of my prayer life happens in my head, it happens in small everyday moments. Um, so it might be while I'm washing up. Um, in fact, quite often it's when I'm washing up because I've got free time away from Elise. Um, and usually, actually, when I'm washing up, it's more about things that make me angry or upset or that I'm worried about and I just chat to God and as I'm washing up I give them to him and tell him about them um, and see if he responds. But it's also things like if I'm out walking and I spot a really beautiful scenery or a beautiful bird flying overhead and often in my head I say wow God your creation is amazing thank you for your creation and it's a bit of praise. Um, or it might be when I was allowed to drive and I used to drive to and from work, I would chat to God about my day um, and how I was feeling about it. And as I'm coming home, I'd chat to God about how my day had gone. Um, in the car journey, again, that was time when I had space to myself to chat to God. Um, but most of that didn't start, dear Lord Jesus, duh, 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 amen. A lot of it is literally just a few sentences in my head oh god do you know what i am so tired right now today has been a really hard tiring day just please give me some peace and some rest and some energy that i need for the rest of my day and that's it that's my chatting to god or it might be wow your creation is so amazing thank you god for your creation and this lovely earth that you have given to us 
thanks God, and that's my time to God. But those sorts of things happen inside my head. Um, so if I want Elise or the kids at our church to understand what a personal relationship with God looks like, where you are connecting with God throughout your whole day and walking with him in your life, then I need to teach her how to do that and show her how she can chat to God about the small things and the big things, whatever she is doing, wherever she is, without having to worry about saying the right thing or learning prayers off by heart. And there's nothing wrong with that. And for some people, that is how they connect with God and then they choose the prayers for the moments they're in. That is absolutely fine, like I said. But this is more about showing kids the different ways that we can chat to God and helping them to find the way that works for them. Some kids will like to go to a quiet space and chat to God. Some kids will like to do it while they're out riding their bikes. Some kids might like to do it as they're playing. Some kids might like to do it at mealtimes. Elise, at the moment, her way of chatting to God and connecting with God is often at a mealtime, she will say, Jesus is coming, mummy, to eat with us. I say, okay, and she makes me put a stool out for Jesus to come and sit on. Um, not got as far as making me put out plate and cutlery for him, um, but that may come down the line, I never know. Um, and as we're having dinner, she sits and she chats to Jesus. Um, and so do I, as that's what she's doing. Um, and we have a great time, we tell Jesus about things we've done, um, things we've enjoyed, sometimes we do it out loud together, sometimes we both, um, I whisper it into our hands, uh, I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, and after dinner she often says Jesus wants to go and play this game and we go and play a game with Jesus uh, about two months ago actually she wanted to do colouring and she'd say mummy can we colour and chat to God and she would sit and she would draw pictures for God um, so it can change it doesn't always have to be the same way but it's about showing them the different ways that they can chat to God and help them find the way that works for them um, so some tips for helping our kids chat to God. The first one, the big one, avoid doing it for them. It's really hard, this one, especially if you've got toddlers or young children. Um, often we will say, oh, what would you like to say thank you to God for? And they'll tell us, and then we'll say the prayer for them. Or is there anything you want to say sorry for? And then they'll, we'll say the prayer for them. Whereas actually, if we want them to learn how to connect to God for themselves, we need to be the coach, doing it alongside them and helping them do it for themselves rather than doing it for them. Any teacher will tell you that doing the work for a child is not going to help them learn, but sitting there and guiding them and modelling that it for them until they can do it for themselves is the way to go. So, how do we coach them into doing it rather than just doing it for them? We can model chatting to God. Every once in a while, create a window into your chats with God. However you do it, wherever you do it, do it out loud instead of in your head. Um, obviously, maybe not the really serious stuff that you don't want your kids to see, but the smaller things, and sometimes the bigger things, you can do it out loud so that they overhear it um, and see you doing it. You can also frame how you chat to God. Um, you can explain a time when you've chatted to God and how it's helped you and what you've chatted to God about um, and frame it for them. You can frame it for them by looking at how people in the Bible chatted to God, especially the disciples. Oh my goodness me, they were walking alongside Emmanuel, God on earth, and having everyday general conversations with him. They even questioned him at times, you know. So showing them that it's okay to ask God questions, it's okay to sometimes be angry, with God or disappointed with God 
um, and tell him that you're feeling that way and he will come and meet you in that place um, and help you through that. So yeah, frame it. Look at when you read Bible stories about the disciples especially, look at the conversations they're having with Jesus and talk about, wow, you know, we can have those same conversations with God today. Um, for under fives, um, here's where I'm going to talk about the whispering because chatting to God is about getting it them to acknowledge that it's not between you and them and God. It's between them and God. So if you've got older children, really do encourage them to do it in their heads. And then after they're finished, give them a chance, if they want to, to share with you what they were chatting to God about. Um, for under fives, they really struggle to do things in their head. So you can get them to whisper it into a pillow or to whisper it into their hands, just so that they are learning that it's between them and God and not between them, you and God. Um, and again, afterwards, you can ask them what they've chatted to God about. And it's up to them if they tell you or not. Um, it doesn't have to be verbal. So if you've got very young children who don't talk a lot yet, or even if you've got children who prefer drawing or writing as a way of expressing themselves, um, they can do that. Um, they can draw pictures, as I said, Elise used to draw pictures for God um, about how she was feeling or about her favourite animals. Um, and she used to draw pictures um, and show them to God. Um, when I was a teenager, I... Um, kept a diary and I wrote letters to God um, and if I caught something back from God I wrote a letter back from God or drew a picture of something that I'd heard back from God with that letter if I didn't hear back from God I've still got my diary and occasionally I look through my letters to God and I can see that actually he has now answered some of those prayers um, which he didn't answer then but you know, 10 years later, I can see, well, he answered that. It might have been five years down the line, but it's now been answered. Um, so if they like writing, get them to write letters. Or if they, if texting is their thing, they're a bit older, you can get them to type a text. They don't have to actually send it, but they can type what they want to say to God onto their phone or into their emails on their computer. Um, yeah, so it doesn't have to be verbal. It can be drawn or written. If they like dancing, you know, they can chat to God through dance and through movement. It's about helping them find the way that is right for them. Um, and lastly, you can use prompts to begin with. Um, you may say, come on, let's chat to God. And they sit there and they're like, I don't know what to chat to God about. Um, so use prompts at the beginning, you know to show them that they can chat to God about absolutely anything. Um, so when we do this as a church and we do chat and catch sessions at church, um, that's what I do. I, I use prompts with you all and you can choose to use those prompts or you can choose to chat to God about your own thing. And that's what we do in kids church as well. We say to them, we're going to have a time of chatting to God now. Um, you can listen to my suggestions or you can chat to God about your own thing. Um, so use prompts. They could be things like tell God what you enjoyed today. Uh, tell God something that made you laugh or cry, tell God your favourite food, TV show joke, tell God one job you don't like doing, uh, you know, tell God something that's worrying you. The list is endless. I have a list of 101 ideas to get your kids chatting to God uh, on my computer, if I can find it. Um, if not, I'll contact Parenting for Faith and get, get it from them for you if you would like that list of ideas just to help get you going, get in touch, and I will email it out to you. Um, you will notice after a while of using prompts, it will start to come more naturally to them. Um, and they may start to do it more themselves without you saying, shall we chat to God now? Um, in the beginning, I would recommend trying different times of day. If they say, no, I don't want to chat to God right now, fine, leave it. Don't force it, don't push it, because then it becomes something that they think they have to do to be right with God, rather than something that they are choosing to do because they love God and they want to spend time with him. Um, so we have 
weeks where we say to Elise, shall we chat to God now? And she runs away and shouts, no, I'm angry with God. And she runs away. And we say, okay, do you want to tell us, tell God why you're angry with him? No, I'm not talking to God right now. And we just leave it. And then two weeks later, she might say, she might suddenly be sat playing in her room and I walk past and she's sat there chatting to God. Oh, God, I was cross because I couldn't see grandma. Um, that happens quite a lot at the moment. Um, and she'll do it in her own time. But that's taken, when did I start doing Chan Couch with her? Probably about four months ago. So it's taken a while and it took practice and time trying it at different times of the day so originally we always did it before bed and that worked really well until she started dropping her nap and now she's overtired before bed so i know there's no point suggesting trying to go before bed anymore um i tell her she can do it in her dreams and she's sleeping um and she often does that because she tells me the next morning the dreams she's had with god um but so then we tried first thing in the morning over breakfast and that worked quite well and then it didn't and then we tried while she was playing or while we were doing a craft or while during lunchtime um or during dinner time and at the moment lunch or dinner seems to be her favorite time to chat's good but we tried it for a month at different times of the day in different ways um before she started to get the hang of it and how she can do it herself so I would say don't push it. If they're saying no, try it in a different way another time or just carry on framing it for them or creating windows into it for them um, so that they can still see you doing it even if they're not wanting to do it themselves. Um, you could suggest going for a walk with them and say as, we walk, as I walk I'm going to chat to God today. Um, you can do the same and you can walk side by side chatting to God in your heads. Or if they're younger, getting them to whisper. You could even say, as we go for our walk today, um, why don't you tell God the things that you see as we're out walking and ask him about them? Um, and then they can do that. And you might find that actually they prefer chatting to God as they're doing something or about what they're doing. Um, so just, you know, try it out. See what happens. Um, and as always, ask for any help. Uh, challenge for this week is to just create a window into you chatting to God for your kids. Um, just let them see it. Chat out loud to God for a little bit, something you'd normally say in your head and let them see it. And again, I am sorry that this has gone on longer than I'd planned, um, but hopefully you found it helpful. Um, yeah, and hopefully I'll see you all soon. Next week we'll be looking at the other side of the tool, which is catching from God. So hopefully I'll see some of you virtually via video then. Take care of yourselves. God bless. Bye.